It was all happening and it was something like out of a James Bond movie. No, I've got him tackling now. What? It's happening. Don't touch him, don't touch him, don't touch him. You don't know what his next action's gonna be. <sighs> No, if I wanted to find him a night, you know, he's, he's got a knife. His heart's not functioning and he's not breathing, so his body's got no sign of life. It was a pretty standard Saturday morning. Troy and Whippet were in the Rhino, just sort of patrolling backpackers in the south corner. We were approached by some members of the public and a guy was sort of, I think there's someone in trouble down there. Hey, God! day you wouldn't think of anything really gonna go wrong and then all of a sudden you're dealing with one of the most major incidents you can get on the beach down here. Bloody. Um, so what you just started feeling a bit off in the water and swam in? Yeah I was pretty fine on the first lap and then I started coming back and I shit what's going on. So you've never had this problem before? Mm -hmm. okay. And is it getting any worse? Oh, this feels sick. His name was Kurt. He was 54 years old and he was complaining of chest pain. Rhino to Bondi Central. Uh, can you call an ambulance for us? We've got a guy down here having a possible heart attack. His arms had a bit of pain and he had pins and needles in his hands, so sort of start ringing alarm bells. Ambulance, please. We've got the DC whipped. Yeah, mate. Bring it down. He's come in, got chest pain, sort of right in the middle, bit of tingling in the fingers. Um, that's the most comfortable position for him. Really deep, slow breathing. Hey, Whip, can I just have that, those stats again? Who is he? What age? Have we got an age? 54. 54. Yeah, Whip it to Nicola. It's slowly getting worse, so just tell the Ambo to be ASAP. Yep, Ambo's on the way, boys. Slowly get you onto your back. All we're going to do is buy the defib machine. The DFib is a piece of equipment that shocks the heart back into a normal rhythm. You know, the worst case scenario is we're going to have to zap this guy back to life. Just try and relax there. We're actually trained not to put the pads on straight away, but all the signs and symptoms were there. You know, it was a really big chance that he was possibly going to have an arrest. You feeling a bit better? Not really. All I can really do is just keep him comfortable. Really hoping that that ambulance will be coming down on the road any time now. Mate, have you got anyone you'd like to get us to contact at all? I knew I had to make that phone call because if, if my husband was having a heart attack on the water's edge at Bondi, I'd want to know. Hi, uh, Michelle, this is Nicola Atherton from the Bondi Lifeguards. Um, I've been given your number. I believe it's either your, uh, could be your husband. Yeah, he's down here at Bondi and he's being treated for a, a suspected heart attack. How do you call someone up and just ruin their day like that? I was trying, I can't even remember what I really said, but just trying to break it to her as, as gently as I could. Just seeing if someone could drop down another boxy just um, just in case the Sambo doesn't get down here in time. Yeah, copy. It was quite nerve-wracking because three or four of us were just standing there just waiting, anticipating the worst was about to happen. I'll go up and meet it. He's in a lot of pain. He's obviously got a lot of chest pain. I um, feel a bit sorry for him, but the ambulance has arrived now, so hopefully we can get him to the hospital pretty quick. And I see Yak's face, you know, it's such a good feeling. To know someone that you're going to be working with, it sort of makes a big difference. You already have that relationship there. I'm a paramedic, full-time paramedic, and I've been a lifeguard now for, I don't know, 16 or 17 years. Describe the pain for me. A cramp. We got a towel or something, please. He's got central chest pain, he's short of breath, he's clammy. He doesn't look well. I'm starting to go out. So, where's your pain? Pain? Was he breathing really three times before? Was he breathing? He's gone now. If he stopped breathing and his heart stopped pumping, he's in cardiac arrest. Oh. Do Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. 
Yeah, yeah. Just pass it out, man. Yeah. His hands are going. Pass wait, 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 just analyze. Yeah. The red button. Red button. Yeah. Everyone clear? Press shock one, deliver. Oh, it is safe to touch the patient. All right, someone get on the chest. CPR now. Someone get on the chest. Someone get on the chest. You want yeah, I'll get on. Continue. All right. Continue for one minute, 45 seconds. We get up. Oxygen, please. Someone. You've got this guy's life in your hands. It's like right there in front of you. You want to make sure that he goes home to his wife and kids. Continue for one minute. One, two. His heart's not functioning and he's not breathing, so his body's got no sign of life. Continue. It's a strange feeling pushing into someone's chest. You know you have to push really hard and go fast, but it is scary. How are you feeling, guys? Yeah, switch up this. Yeah, I'll come in. Doing compressions is hard work. You get tired, so I took over from Troy after about two or three cycles. You know, you went into this fit, and I was terrible to witness, because, you know, I hadn't seen that before. Now, that's going to happen with the brain not receiving enough oxygen. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, buddy. Doing good, mate. He's breathing on his own. It's good. Let me know if I keep going. It's such a relief. I could see him breathing again. Wipe his arm on that side for me. Okay, you're all right. Out of nowhere, bang, his eyes open. It was just like, oh, thank God. Oh, all right, we've got a sharps here. <laughs> How you going up there, Louise? Are you all right? Yeah, he's good. He's breathing on his own. Thanks, Harrison. Can you give me a bit of an update as to what's happening? So I just want to keep the wife in the loop. Yeah, mate, I've Embo's here, uh, working on him at the moment. He was conscious and alert when he came to us. The ambulance was down here within five minutes, so there has been a really good response time and all, all precautions have been taken. Mate, his wife's up there on the phone. 56. Mm. You don't know where you'll be going? Oh, probably mm. Vinny's on safe from here, but I don't know for sure. So just, I don't want you to panic or anything, and I will keep you updated along the way as best I can, OK? Hi, Hi, mate. How you going? How you feeling, buddy? How you feeling? Have you still got pain in your chest? Yeah. Continue with that for a sec. Beautiful. You see Ellie, if you need a break box. Yeah. That's good. And the VP was what? 150. Right, Where's the towel? I'll just hope you get a towel. Once he went into a rest on the beach, a second ambulance has to be called an IC paramedic, basically because they have a lot more skills and more drugs than what qualified ambulance officers have. So the story is the boys had the pads already on when we got here. Oh, yeah. He went into a rest. When you, you yeah, witnessed a rest. Yeah. One shock straight up. Like oh. Machine called for one oh. shock straight up, followed by about a minute and a half CPR. And then return to circulation. And then return to circulation. Okay. What time was that? Oh, mate, we're we talking roughly? 10 minutes ago. Yeah. One, three, one, two, three, go. Once he's stabilised, we need to get out of there ASAP. Right. As lifeguards, they've done their bit. As paramedics, we've done our bit. The next step is for the doctors and nurses to probably do an angiogram, see what sort of blockages there are and whatever the scenario is. I mean, at the moment, he's looking good, but um, it's a long trip to the hospital, so fingers crossed. Looking back on the situation, the boys have done a fantastic job. They've done everything they could with the training that they have. It hits you like a ton of bricks when it happens. You're physically and emotionally drained. <gasps> this was the first time I've actually witnessed an arrest right in front of me. <laughs> I think 54 is way too young to have a heart attack. It makes you think yourself, you know, you, you should have get regular checks and you know how fit you really are. I feel like I'm having a heart attack myself. <laughs> you can never prepare yourself for that, to what just happened, you know? It's just, it's just the way things just unfold, you know, you're down here on a, on a Sunday and you think it's a nice quiet day and then the guy drops with a heart attack right there, you know, it's pretty full on. Kurt's got into cardiac arrest, we've shocked him, we've got him back, he's talking to us. It doesn't mean he's out of the woods yet. Shock 
Shock one delivered. All right. Continue. When anybody comes back to the tower after we've worked on them, you know, it gets quite emotional because, you know, one minute you're seeing him in probably the worst situation they could possibly be in, and next minute they walk through the door. Hey, how you going? G'day. How are you? Good, good. How are you? And you're the guys that saved my life. Oh, I'm one off. Hey, how are you? Hey, Kurt. Whip it. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Max. Yeah, good, buddy. Troy. Hey, Troy. Hey, Troy. I remember you. Actually, Lovely you remember me. Harrison. Hey, Harrison. Nice how are you, Kurt? Whip it, found. He found you on the beach. And you kept saying, I'm getting worse, I'm getting worse. I'm like, this is not good. Yeah, Doctors yeah. have said, basically, if you hadn't wired me up yeah. like, like that, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Simple as that. I mean, the good thing was when we got to you, you were conscious and you could give us your symptoms and yeah. to get there and have the time and to be able to prepare for it makes a big difference for us. Nicola had the worst job having to, to call your wife. I was like, oh, my God, you poor thing. <laughs> I, I mean, at first I didn't know that Kurt had gone to Bondi that day. I thought he'd just gone to the pool, so I got a bit of a shock. And then I freaked out. I don't know how I sound on the telephone, but every time you phoned me, it was right at the right time. I got the reassurance I needed all the way through. Oh, so good. That was right. really fantastic. I just wanted you to be there for, yeah. you know, whatever the outcome was going to yeah. be. And, like, yeah. I knew that, you know, you had the best guys on the job, so... It, mate, you were just, like, SAS. It was, like, it was, it was amazing, you know? <laughs> you were all, like, regimental and you knew what... You, you Tell the council that am I going to pay rise. What surgery did you...? Oh, they just put a balloon in it. Like, they, they, there's no stinker in it. They just, they just had to go in and... Oh, it was amazing. When they hit the, the clot and just sucked it out, and as soon as... Cos I was in so much pain, mate. It was like a, having yeah, a jackhammer, really you know? And as soon as they sucked that out, instantly, it was like, oh, the pain's gone. It was like, wow. Fantastic. Where are you at now? Is everything OK? Are you OK? Oh, yeah, look, you know, the doctor, you know, he basically said, just stop eating shit. You yeah. also said that if it hadn't been for you guys, um, Kurt's condition would be a lot worse, so he's had minimal damage to his yeah, heart, yeah. which has been... Yeah, I'll come out of it like I'm the luckiest guy alive. I'm no doubt about it at the moment. Oh, that's you know, good. There's you guys and everyone else, you know, so... That's good. It makes us, <laughs> so, you know, it's what makes our job worthwhile. What happened to Kurt? drums home how precious life is. Thanks for coming down to see oh, us no, because pleasure. it, it always means a lot to us to be able to see the people that we get back. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You know, really, really appreciate it. There's a full-on police chase. No, if I wanted to find him a night, you know, he's, he's got a knife. A cloudy day, midweek at Bondi. Lifeguards aren't expecting a busy workload. Oh, I don't like the look of him and two of the blokes I told him. Yeah. said he's got a blade with him, he's got a switchblade, he's got quite a long knife on him. It's illegal to carry large knives in public. Thank but you so much. Somebody's just yeah. told me he's got a knife. That's yeah. Not funny. Uh, yeah. All right, okay. I'll give the cops to him. Thank What's you. I'll get some walk up there. You won't notice me. Head lifeguard Hoppo makes his way to the scene. Reaching the grassed area, Hoppo IDs the man reported to have a knife. More lifeguards are drawn to the scene as fresh reports come in. What's yeah, he look like? He just whipped out a blade. Just, oh. uh, like a black tank top, black tank top. Hi. Hello. Um, there's a man over there with a uh, knife. Just had a report that there's a guy up in the park and he's got a knife. From first look at him on the binoculars, he doesn't seem like he's doing anything. It looks like he's just lying there. But obviously, if we get, an, uh, we get something from the public about someone having a knife, it's Pretty serious. You don't know what his next action's going to be. I reckon let's just get the cops down here ASAP. This is a situation. Drop it, I'm calling them now. Right down to the cops, can you call the cops to out the front of North Monday Fish? Yeah. Reedy and Hoppo step in until police arrive. So when I got up to the grassy knoll, I was kind of looking around and it was quite hard to figure out who it was with the knife. With nothing happening in the water, Harrison heads down as backup. Reedy and I got to North, and uh, look, we were pretty, you know, concerned about our well-being because you don't know the mental state of this guy up there. You don't know what could happen. Reedy scans the vicinity for local police. It's not a D car here, is it? Nah. Where is he? Reedy decides to take a closer look and picks up some protection on the way. And I walk past a family with a cricket bat. I got a cricket bat. Can I borrow it? Yeah. It's all right. Just, just need it, just to something that, just a situation that might. 
It was an old grey nick, and I just thought, it doesn't get much better than this, a cricket bat. Where is he? North of Bondi, don't you? Yep, yep, the cops are on their way now. Within a few minutes, we were up there. Sirens lit up Bondi. In less than three minutes, four vehicle units arrive. Extra units follow up on foot. What is all going on? The suspect isn't waiting around to be questioned by police. Once the uh, suspect saw myself and the cops walking towards him, he was out of there. He just did the Bible. Going out along the road. Lifeguards and police are unsure if the man is still armed with a knife. The best weapon to take to a knife fight probably be a taser or a gun, which the police have. I'm armed with a green whistle and a radio. The man looks for an escape route. Yeah, he's, he's running back towards. He's on the ground now. He's gone into someone's house. So I'm watching this man in front of me, like Spider-Man, just launching into houses. Where is he? He's on the, in that big um, yellow. He's on the Oh, what? I've got another car. Send him up for MK, haven't you? But that's where we'll end up. There's a full-on police chase happening right now. The chase moves onto the streets of North Bondi. We're searching through the units and uh, he seemed to disappear and we're worried he just slipped through the net. Hoppo, Reedy and Harrison assist, but the man seems to have slipped through. After a while of searching, we're struggling to find him and... I don't know if I wanted to find him or not, you know, he's got a knife. <laughs> Then, a sighting of the man at North Bondi Headland. What? It's happening. Yes, as we were running after him, uh, one of the cops were on the other side and basically just crash tackled him as he as he ran across the park. Is that it? Yeah. Is that your answer? It's my name. Yeah, really? Obviously, you must have something going on to uh, to run and, and not just stay around and talk to the police. And then here comes flying past. The chase has captured the attention of Bondi's local kids, teenagers and hipsters. I could have dead set put my arm out and ankle tapped if I hadn't known who he was, but I thought he was an undercover. <laughs> Hectic. The man was taken into custody. The charges were dismissed on mental health grounds. The police were very professional and turned up quite quick. We worked in well together, which was really good to see, and the outcome was great. We ended up apprehending the person. Back at the tower, Harrison and Hoppo recount their fearless community service. Everyone's watching me and I'm doing this. <laughs> I just didn't want to slip over. Did you have a lot of adrenaline chasing? I felt confident when I had three undercovers following me with guns. <laughs> <laughs> all back to Kitty's Corner again, you know? It's all nice and safe down here till the next drama. <laughs> it was like we're on the set of a Hollywood movie, mate. It was unbelievable. He just jumped in the water again towards the lake. He's touching everyone. Just, yeah, he's not right. He's not right there. The Russian people up the north, he's in between me and the north set of flags. Black pants and black shorts. I just see him behaving really aggressive towards someone on the shore. Is he violent or is he just touching people inappropriately? No, he's not violent, no, he's touching people. Yeah, or if we just keep focusing on the water, I'll call the cops. Good afternoon, Julia. It's Trim from the Bono Lifeguards. How are you? Uh, we have a man uh, down here who's inappropriately touching people um, in the water. You know, they pretend to bump into people, and but we've had like numerous, numerous complaints. 
Within seconds, more reports come in. If your officers want to come to... If you're sending a crew down, if they want to come to the tower, we could point them in his direction. Hey, mate. Sorry, bud. Yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. We, we've been a reporter, yeah. Thank you. In the space of half an hour, lifeguards received six reports. Uh, a guy just came up to us in the surf, tapped me on the shoulder, said... I don't even know what he said, but he's just... You could see in his eyes, he's so drunk. When he came up to Nick, I just felt very uncomfortable, so we just wanted to make the lifeguard aware, just in case anything happened in the water. I know what's going to happen. The police are going to come down here and I'm not going to be able to find him. I can't keep eyes on him the whole... You know what I mean? Half an hour until they get here, and then in the meantime, we've got people who are going... You know what happens? You take your eyes off yeah. the rips to follow some idiot like this, yeah. and that's when you miss rescues. As predicted, the man alleged to be stalking women isn't the only thing lifeguards need to keep an eye on. There's two swimmers in the rear, the guys in the white hat, yeah. It's a girl and a guy. Oh, but he can't really horse. swim either. Oh, he's holding her up? Well, she's going under. I reckon you're in here. Okay. Supporting the woman, the man barely keeps himself afloat. I don't like these scenarios that pull a lot of resources off the water because essentially our main job criteria here as lifeguards is to make sure no one drowns. Who's in the middle of a rescue now? You know, we're on high alert here and, and there's a lot going on, so it's a bit stressful today. Yeah, come in. When the police arrived for this matter, I was really relieved because our main priority here is, is the swimmers in the surf. Thanks for coming down for a sprint. Oh, he's, we're getting reports he's touching people on the beach and in the water. The man is spotted under the beach hire umbrellas, but he doesn't get to enjoy the shade for long. I could see them chasing the alleged offender down the beach. I had no idea what was going to happen next. I could see them chasing the alleged offender down the beach. They tried to chat to the man, at which point he left the conversation and they gave chase. The whole thing looked quite surreal. I thought it would just be a standard apprehension or an arrest, but it certainly didn't go that way. When they got to the water's edge, he entered the water and they stopped. And then I later learned that it's police protocol uh, not to enter the water. At Bondi, when the long arm of the law isn't quite long enough, it's time to call the lifeguards. We don't have a boat, but we have a jet ski, but um, let's formulate a plan from up here. All right? Thank you. Cheers. What now? Go. They want to put the jet ski in the water to go and get him, but... To get who? This guy. Oh, why? He's not going to get on the jet ski. Nah, that's what I said. And then that'd just be dangerous, because it's like, get on, mate, and you just won't. As the arrest strategy is formulated, the man makes his way onto the reef at the south end. You can walk out there. We're not allowed to. Not allowed to. Uh, if he wrestles with us out there, something happens. Yeah. And well, it's you know, that, okay. So the police responded with their water police boat, and once they brought their water police boat into the bay, it was decided that it was too shallow for the water police boat to come in close enough, so they needed another plan. The standoff begins, and the spectators gather. I started to get pretty hectic down there. Before I knew it, Boo and I were, we were in our little yellow buggy and just sort of looking around going, this is, like, fully escalating, eh? Like, oh, my God. If we can, if we can clear this area out, that'll be sweet. No worries, mate. The police have asked us to, um, to remove all, all the swimmers from the water. Yes, hello, everyone. I need everyone's attention in the water here. We've got the police's orders. We need to evacuate the water. Normally, lifeguards only evacuate the water. All these swimmers, please, out of the water. Get out of the water. During shark sightings. 
Why is there a shark? No, there's no shark. Don't say that word on the beach, everyone gets scared. Is there a whale? No, there's no whale. <laughs> what is there then? I can't tell you, you'll see in a little bit. What's in the water, money? I can't tell you, mate. Um, okay, you can keep thinking. They got the water police boat out here and old mates here just floundering on the rocks. It's an interesting one. After a one hour standoff, Paul Air is called in. <laughs> When that chopper come over the headland, it was like we are on the set of a Hollywood movie, mate. It was unbelievable. So the police called in all the cavalry. The boat was arriving, that was a helicopter too. It was all happening and it was something like out of a James Bond movie. After 45 minutes, the lifeguard tower begins to resemble a mobile command centre. A plan is urgently required. Are the water police in, like, ready to go in the water or not? Now. So the police and the lifeguards came up with a third plan, and that was to send Beardy out on the jet ski to the police boat, pick up the water police officers, and bring them in to the man on the rocks. The man has now evaded police for over an hour and a half. Beardy's picked up the two water police from the boat, okay. and he's driven into icebergs where this guy's perched up on this random rock. Uh, such a weird situation. A jet ski, a boat, a helicopter, scores of police and half a dozen lifeguards. They just arrested him with force. And uh, before we knew it, we were just sitting there and uh, he was getting marched off the base, wrist locked with an escort of police. It was, it was quite a full-on scene. After an hour and 45 minutes, the man was arrested and charged with hinder police as well as stalk and intimidate. Never a dull moment. Johnny is also fitted with a defibrillator in the hope his heart can be restarted. We've got no pulse, no breathing. As Singlet's heads out, Jethro notices something isn't right. Someone holding her up. I remember coming over to the last wave and what I saw next just, you know, absolutely shocked me to the core. Hello? Keep going up. Hello? Shit. The woman is unconscious and not breathing. Singlets must let the team know. The situation is critical. Instead of three pumps, the first thing you got to do is, is get the deep fifth. The man and the woman are from the same family. Of course, I wanted to help Singer. He was asking for help, but I couldn't leave this guy that was clearly about to drown. So I had to paddle that guy in and go help again. Hey, hey. Singlets are screaming at me to come over and help him. This lady's and then I heard on the megaphone. There's one out to the left here as well. Further out, the situation has become much worse. Had to paddle over the crest of one or two more little waves, and then I just saw the person face down, just lifeless and face down. But I've seen some crazy things in my 19 years of, of service, and mate, that one was just, just unbelievable. Chapo's not even working. Chapo's in there. Where we were, there was just constant little ways that just kept chipping away, like just making it harder and harder and harder. I just went straight to Corey because he needed help. Singlets is left with no assistance. You know, I just felt like, how am I going to manage this? Like, there's no one to help. It's been three minutes since the pair were found face down. The human brain cannot survive without oxygen for much longer than six minutes. If I lose my board... Come on, mate. Talk to me. Hello. Worst possible scenario. Hello. Because I'm going to be in the water with a dead patient. Hello, hello. Come on, come. I just thought to myself, I'm going to have to draw on every little bit of skill. Every little bit of training. Lady, hello. To get this woman in, because there is really no other option. who's tried to pick up an unconscious patient is just 
pretty much sometimes impossible on your own. And, you know, for the job he did, it was just incredible. Pick up. Sideways, sideways, use the drone. This way, this way. Yeah. Four and a half minutes after Oddbjorg was first found, Singlets begins the vital compressions, which will circulate oxygen from her bloodstream through to her brain. Oddbjorg's sister watches on. Even with like three or four other guys trying to push the board when a wave came, the, the waves just wouldn't take us. Almost six minutes have lapsed since Corey first reached Johnny. Five surfers have joined three lifeguards in the fight against the rig. Somehow he came off the board again. It just drove me insane that I couldn't get him in. Lifeguards listen to the defibrillator. Continue for 15 but Oddbjerg's heart rhythm is in flatline and she can't be shocked. Stop CPR. Stop now. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. I remember looking around and went, oh no. This is going to be the worst thing I've ever seen. It's a lifeguard. Good boy. Good boy. Now get that back in. The thing that was going through my brain more than anything was like, this person's. Friends or family are going to be on the beach watching this whole thing. Continue for one minute thirty. This is the worst crisis the service has faced in decades. No matter how long they've been unconscious for, you know you, you're not going to give up. Get the bearing. Get the yeah. head back. Head back. Head tilt. That's yeah. it. Continue. Good, good compression box. They're getting there. They're getting there. Boys, have I got anyone to come up here and give the ambos a lift down? Oh, take the buggy. Now, just need you to come over. Yes. Yeah. Hey, jump in, jump in. Fifteen minutes after the pair were found face down. How many patients you got? Two. The prospect of successful resuscitation is becoming less likely by the second. There's one patient, there's one patient. We've got no pulse, no breathing in the water for maybe five, nine five minutes. Okay, we're going with the shocks and all that. We haven't had a shock, we haven't had a mate The whole time, I just, I wanted to see nothing but see him start coughing or, or blink. Johnny is also fitted with a defibrillator in the hope his heart can be restarted. But no shockable rhythm is present. Back to CPR, print, print, please ventilate. The hope is that we generate a, a shockable rhythm, we get it off flat line, and that can help him come back to life. Doing well, guys. 30 metres away, Paramedics fit an ECG machine to Oddbjerg, hoping to identify electrical activity in her heart. And then, out of nowhere, he said, oh, hey, boys, I think I'm getting a, a faint electrical activity there. Next minute, you know, we heard, we've got activity, there's a pulse come back. And I looked at Singles, was like, oh, my God, like, we've got it back. Absolutely incredible. One of the paramedics told me that there's a 0.01% chance that someone will survive something like this. And there it was right in front of us. It was just this huge relief in singles and I was like, thank God. But you know, that that didn't help things as well because then the boys unfortunately across from us were like, you know, had their heads down. With their sister revived, family members turn to their brother-in-law. But after 30 minutes of CPR, paramedics call an end to the resuscitation. We're just like, how? Why can't we get this guy back? Like, you know, over the years, we've had so many 
successful sort of recesses and it's surreal having someone die at your hands. It's not what many people are used to dealing with. Yeah, poor Jeff, bro. He was in the tower and would have hit him hard as well. It's, it's harder to be in the tower when recesses are going on because you feel helpless, but you're playing such an important role. Yeah, when Singlet started paddling, it just got worse and worse. our one job down here to, to get everyone home safe and out of the water and you know obviously sometimes we do our best and it's not good enough but it hurts a lot. Now breathing on her own, Oddbjerg is placed into an induced coma and prepared for transportation to hospital. Yeah, I'll come with you as well, all right? It's going to be okay. Thank you. So she's showing really good signs, all right? So just relax, okay? It's going to be all right. I had a yeah? brother-in-law, too. I know, it's OK. One, just worry about one person at a time, OK? Thank you. It may be days before Oddbjerg's condition is fully known. You never have that you know, feeling of relief until you finally get the all clear and, you know, you're just praying, you know, for days that you're going to get that. I was just sitting in the tower watching the water and we got a knock at the door and she said, ah, uh, hi, uh, you rescued my sister. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and I was just, she was looking at me and I, I just said, you know, how, how is she? And she's like, this is her. <laughs> and the lady just stood there and like, we just looked at each other for, I felt like for like 20 seconds, we just, I just looked at her. I was like, this can't be real. Like, you should be dead. We, as soon as we saw each other, we just had this huge hug for about a minute and uh, there were tears. For me to see her with life in her body and life in her eyes, it was incredible. So this is from the sister, actually. Dear Trent, thank you again for saving my sister from drowning on Bondi Beach. The hard work you and your fellow lifeguards did for both Oddbjörg and our brother-in-law, Johnny, meant the world to us. I had the feeling of being on, in a roller coaster between deep sorrow and extreme happiness. Going home together with Oddbjörg, who shows no signs of injury at all, is the best gift ever. I would like you to know and also pass on to your fellow lifeguards the all of us who are present at Bondi are so grateful for your knowledge, capacity, endurance and hard work regarding both Johnny and my sister. Our sister who lost her husband asked me to thank you for trying as hard as you did to save Johnny's life. His coffin will come to Norway in a few days, so we are going together for his funeral. Please pass on our thanks to everybody involved. Face blue, no pulse. He's clinically dead. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, I think you're going to need a deep here, babe. Yeah, I'm going to hold him. Head's all with him. We're going to race up here. Stand by, don't know, we might need a deep here. We're going to have to get a deep here, gentlemen. You turn around and grab that deep here. That's all right. A swimmer has drowned at Bondi. Face blue, no pulse. He's clinically dead. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Get in. Come on, 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 get in. Come
but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. The defib is vital. Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, guys, you do me a massive favour, man. Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, 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 buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. See that flag, the flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. Ali, go, go, go. I promise, Ali, go, go. I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. Oi, run. Run, man. We need to get him up in the dry sand. I mean, the third round now. Where's that deep in? We need He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22. Here you come, Chabba. Someone give Chabba a break. Yeah, I'll come in, I'll come in. Come on. Right there. Let's go. Right out. Let's go. 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 It's now four minutes since the man was first discovered. No one knows how long he was under the water before then. It's critical that no one touches the man's body while it is shocked. I know you can't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. You'll get electrocuted. Someone go breathing. If needed, begin CPR. Okay, Has pulse, got a pulse? pulse? I've got a pulse. I have a pulse. Okay, do you want to have a pulse? He's responding. He's responding. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's breathe with him. Breathe with him. I've got a pulse, I've got a pulse. Breathe him up. I've got a pulse. 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 I
one of the first to reach Ryan was former lifeguard Matt Cahoon. Yeah, I was just out body surfing, and a whole lot of kids had the, they were doing the right thing. I sent Matt over on the board, he's whacked a breath into him. Maxie on the jet ski came across. I jumped on the back of the jet ski, he was gone, he was vomiting up, his eyes were rolling. Someone handed him his arm, pulled him up by myself, dragged him up, and um, one of the swimmers out there was the next lifeguard, and I said, mate, get on, and like, you know, start, start compressing. Took him straight in. To be honest, I thought he was um, gone. At St Vincent's Emergency, Ryan is still in critical condition. Paramedics brief doctors. Dragged to the beach. The lifeguards put a automated defibrillator on, they didn't shock him. As we're coming in, he's complaining of neck pain. Dan is eager for news. Um, he was very, very badly hurt in the, in the water. His lungs were full of water. So we have had to put a tube down his throat and a machine is ventilating him. In his stomach as well, a lot of water. About, we had about half a litre of water in there. You want to see him? Yeah. He's very lucky. Very lucky to be alive. CPR started straight away and that's what was needed. Instant, early, effective CPR. And the guys at the beach have saved his life. A week after Ryan Kim was brought back to life, First aid expert Jamie Twight holds a debrief session. It's the first time I've seen this, so let's let's have a look. Oi! Bring him up, boy! Get him out of the water! Get him out of the water! Get him out of the water! The guy is so blue. Obviously, no no spinal precautions taken here, but listen, your priority, the guy's blue, he's not breathing, he's, he's a drowning victim. You need to get him out the beach and start working on him. There's a lot of water coming out of him now. At this stage, I would have rolled him and, and tried to get some water out of him. Okay? Yeah, so here, right, we stop here, we stop here. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to respond to that CPR. As they fine-tune their skills, Hoppo arrives with a dead man walking. You look a little, little bit different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to watch this from the start? <laughs> yes? Yeah? OK. All right. Here you are. Get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. Get him out of the water. And then we'll start compressions up here. Okay. Yeah, come on. Get him off, get him off. Yeah, we're in a mask, we're in a mask. Oh my god, I was dead. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, dead. Now you're back. There's no more dramatic story to take back home. Do you remember what happened? Uh, I swim in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Then big waves cover me. My body is turned over in the sea, yeah. so yeah. I drank too much, too See, much water. sea. Salt water, yeah. yeah, salty water. I can swim, so I tried, I tried that, but and another, another wife here. Yeah. Maybe uh, three times. Yeah. I I give it, keep it, give up. I fall in water. Oh, above yeah. your head, yeah. Yeah, everything is so comfortable, and and then I think, oh, it's die, it's it's die. Oh, I'm very skilled. And then my memory is slowly, slowly shut down. First, I wake, wake, wake him up. Yes. Uh, I hold crap. Oh, really? You remember? Yeah. Very many of you guys have to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to see you smile. Thank you very much. It's pretty special to, to meet the guy and just to see him walking around. It's good. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. I, it's just wine oh, <laughs> for you. Oh, we love wine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, the fact that you brought something about the life and I was about to contribute to that, you know, I feel really good. He's in his mid-20s, a life expensive another 60 years, you know, so, and he sees another beautiful day.